We are very honored to have with us for this final segment today, Dr. Kenneth Hicks, who's a professor of history and political science here at RSU. Dr. Hicks, welcome. Thank you for having me back. Good to have you here again. And I want to I want to jump right into this. What's not going on in Congress? Well, Congress can't function um, because certainly in the House, the problem is that the Republican majority is, is so narrow. They, they uh, promised a red wave uh, in 2022. They, uh, they did win control of the House, but they only had, I think, a five or six seat uh, majority. And they really haven't been able to translate that majority into, uh, into governing wins. Mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, one of the first acts that they that they passed was uh, was HR two, which was a really uh, draconian immigration bill. Um, but this, you know, the, the Senate is dominated by, uh, well, not dominated, but again, narrowly controlled by Democrats, and there was simply nothing that that the Senate, you know, uh, majority would, you know, would would take up, and so right now it's just it, it's the gang that can't shoot straight. They. Uh, you know, Democrat, our Republic, I mean, the, the, the Senate actually uh, came up with an immigration bill because Democrats want to govern on the issue. They don't want to be campaigning with chaos on the border. Um, and this is probably the most leverage that Republicans were going to have on that issue. Uh, and they couldn't get to yes. Uh, because again, uh, Mike Johnson of Louisiana, who is the current speaker, uh, simply couldn't control his, uh, you know, his his conference. Did you did you catch the inference that w I think it came out yesterday in the race for uh, mm -hmm. Congress that ensued, I believe, in one of the New York townships to replace that sorry excuse. Yeah, George R. Soros, yeah. Yeah, th that where they said maybe we'll get one or two points higher IQ in this office, but then that in itself is dangerous. Yeah. I'd love to know who said that. That's an interesting quote. And, and again, I uh, there, there's another quote, but the, the name escapes me. Is the, the guy said, I, I like my politicians like bankers. I like them to be good at math and very, very boring. You know, <laughs> it's, <laughs> uh, because again, a lot of what happens with governance, you, you don't want people that are too imaginative uh, because they can, you know, come up with really, really drastic solutions to uh, what are otherwise problems that should simply be managed. Uh, the, the, the race you're talking about, again, the Democrats won that race. Uh, they've won a lot of the special elections recently. And a lot of that has to do, I think, with the fact that Trump is almost certainly going to, the former President Donald Trump is almost certainly going to be the Republican nominee uh, for president. And a lot of Americans, you know, a solid third, most Republican primary voters want Donald Trump. Uh, I don't think most Americans want a return of Donald Trump. And so it, it really just highlights how polarized we've become in our politics. Is it safe to say that the majority of the Republican office holders in Washington kowtow to Donald Trump, who is just running for re-election because they want the support of his voters? Yeah, I think it's pretty clear that the immigration bill that the Senate uh, passed uh, failed because Donald Trump said, I don't want it, you know, I don't want it passed. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's certainly there's a lot of evidence uh, that House Republicans are, are, well, frankly, they're terrified of him uh, because they know he's more popular in their districts than than they are. And that to go up against Donald Trump is to almost certainly invite a primary challenger from someone who says he's not MAGA enough. And they have seen what happens uh, to people who get challenged from the right by people who, you know, who are, who say they're, you know, they're MAGA. And, well, in, and who in get... your opinion, where does that put us? Where are we headed? If he's reelected, which We're... I'm, I'm beginning to have some serious doubts about that. There was a, uh, there was a judge today that just ruled just this morning that uh, Trump can't delay the start of his trial, and it's going to kick off in March. Yes. 
And Trump and his legal team were very un unhappy with that. Of his four trials, this is the one that's in New York. It deals with uh, uh, him falsifying taxes mm -hmm. to hide a, uh, a payment that he had made to a Stormy exotic Daniels. dancer named Squ Stormy Daniels. Yeah. And that is probably the weakest of the four cases. Uh, the case in Georgia looks like it may be delayed. Uh, they've been dealing with a, a challenge to the, the prosecutor, Fonnie Willis's, oh, uh, that, you yeah. know, on, on grounds that uh, I've been actually, as a political junkie, I've been live streaming it all morning. Um, and, you know, again, it's just going to depend on what the judge decides. Um, you know, the case in, in you know, in, in Florida dealing with his retention of documents appears to be the most straightforward case. But again, you've got a, a judge uh, down there that, that is perfectly willing to kind of allow the, the case to be delayed. Uh, and so, again, you know, Trump's, Trump's hope is that he can, you know, play these out and get to the election without a trial actually reaching a verdict, because I think that would, you know, again, it, it's, it, it's creating an incredibly muddled uh, yeah, and environment. If he's elected, for, can he walk in and just pardon himself? In some of them, yes. Uh, in in the New York case, he can't because that is a state case. Albeit, again, there's a complication because ordinarily the kind of tax fraud that he's been accused of would be a misdemeanor. They have elevated it to a felony because they said he did it in furtherance of violation mm -hmm. of federal mm -hmm. election laws, which is again, you've got a state case. And where the, where the escalator is a federal law, <laughs> so again, it's it's really complicated and muddled. We've got about a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. You're on a book. You're working on a book. Yes. Could you, could you thumbnail it for us? Yes. The book is is entitled uh, American Kulturkampf, and Kulturkampf is a German word for culture war. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm reflecting on sort of the parallels between the United States and Germany in the 19th century. Both countries had what we would call weak states. Uh, Germany certainly had a strong Prussian state, but it had just unified after you know generation. Well hundreds of years of, be, you know, of, of the other German principalities mm -hmm. being divided by France and the Austro-Hungarians and everybody else. And Germany went through a 12-year war over control of, of basic aspects of governance in those areas that were dominated by the Catholic Church at the time. And, and I'm basically ruminating on the challenges you know, to statehood uh, that we're going through, uh, that we are engaged, I believe, in a culture war where it's not simply culture, but it, there are there are powerful uh, religious uh, components to our uh, cultural conflicts as well. Are you frightened at all by the shape of a, the Supreme Court? Uh, I'm very uh, disquieted by it. Uh, I think Republicans have, you know, they, they, I, I think your average Republican would say, hey, we won that, you know, we won control of the Supreme Court fair and square. Uh, but they didn't do it the way it, hap it had happened previously. Of course, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt made nine appointments. He did it by winning elections. Uh, you know, the, the, the people that are sitting on the court right now were nominated by presidents that didn't win the popular vote and by senates, you know, by senators uh, that, that, that didn't control a majority of the votes in the Senate. Well, I got to tell you, Dr. Hicks, I, I wish we had more time and we don't. Will you come back? Absolutely. Happy uh, to. Count on it then. If you get a note over there and say, well, we want you back, let's get some more time on you. Sure. Happily. We got to pull more out. <laughs> I got to do a better job of it. Anyway, thank you for being here. Okay. We're all out of time. Thank you for being a part of it. And uh, down the road, I promise you, we'll have Dr. Hicks back to get into more on Perspectives.